Lindsay Thompson, but she shoots it wide. It would stay scoreless to late in the first half as coach Jackie Dean looked on and she would see Bridgewater Raiden hustle to get the game's first goal. Has a McIntosh booting it away from Jen Fanoff. The throw in late in the first half sets up Kelly Maddock and Maddock top shelf, looping it in one to nothing Bridgewater at the break. Bridgewater had four great opportunities in that first half. However, second half, Wildcats' offense does come to life. Jen Fournier, nice moves, and denied by Erin Noyes. And she tried to cross it. And here, Noyes will stop. A little flick by Caitlin Roby on net. However, late in the game, a break wave its way. Chrissy Chase just throws herself right into the play and gets herself a penalty kick out of it. Hey. Go for it with 151 left. She cashes in. She took advantage of a situation and got the penalty kick tied at one. It seemed like the final two minutes went on forever, and Heather McIntosh made sure that the Wildcats would get out of this with a 1-1 tie. Lindsay Thompson with that great... You were at Weymouth Junior High School for soccer action as today the Wildcats of Weymouth High. Good evening, Mark. Leading one, taking a interesting match. Smartable has been a team that has played everybody to the very end. There have been some pretty good battles with the Red Raiders and the Wildcats over the years. As we're on the way, Wildcats will be heading back to right. Wait. The maroon numerals, maroon short, Smartable traveling red. The very Stylish, white numeral. Seniors, mostly juniors, the coach Mark Buckler. Josh. Wildcats coming up to win over Silver Lake, breaking that game open in the second half as they scored three. And a good idea right here. Weymouth cannot cast that field. Just on the way, Weymouth and Barnstable. In from Weymouth Junior High, Mark Duchamp with you on Cox Communications 23. Glad you joined us. There's the Wildcats. Can remain undefeated. And they have a pretty 
difficult task after this particular game. There's some tough ones coming up. And time we bring you this one, Cox. We're going to spread out our schedule. And we'll know how they did in what will be a very tough week of games. As we almost get a souvenir. It will have a space of about five days. They will have Brockton. They will have New Bedford and Bridgewater Rainham, and it's not an easy task to say the least. Brockton, an improved team, and it's New Bedford, one of the best around. And Bridgewater Rainham and Wayne is always a war. But you know, this is how you become a better team, and this is how this team has better ones around as they make the push, second push towards the net. Seamus Donovan. Flicked on, Steven just getting the hands on it. The foot, a Chris Machado, and the corner kick coming up. Timmy Karalexis. Against on the south, he contributed with four big assists. Stanford tries to chip it towards the net and have Beston go attack it. And we'll say that Chris interfered with goalkeeper Mark Stevens. Goal kick coming up for the Red Raiders. And Wildcats creating some chances for themselves and just not able to cash in. And McDonald. Tim Carroll Alexis goes outside for Joe Kelleher. And McLuhan coming in for the Wildcats, who controls here in the first four or five minutes of this one, and a great throw in. Gets the goal. Seamus Donovan off the great throw in. Back Tim Carroll Alexis and the one to nothing Wildcat lead. Well, oh, terrific throw in gives the Wildcats the early advantage as they have come out very quickly. It's best in. Gets the angle for the ball and crosses it very nicely. Donovan couldn't control but got it back to Beston. Good hustle by Barnstable. Aldo Rosa does a great job. He just stayed with the play, wouldn't let the Wildcats get anything going between Beston and Donovan. He stayed in between both of them and broke up the play. Carol Alexis. Kelleher, Donovan, two for two. Seamus just floated it over, goal to keeper Mark Stevens and the Wildcats. Really just taking it to Barnstable early. And your Barnstable coach, Mark Buckler, it is not the start you wanted. As it has been all Weymouth for the first five, six, seven minutes. And they look as though they are not going to let up as Kelleher. They are really doing a terrific job and not allowing Barnstable to even move up the field. Even when the Red Raiders have moved it up the field, the Wildcats have cut them off. And the only time Barnstable, since the about ooh, maybe the first or second minute, has got it across midfield to try to do something. And it has been the Wildcat defense since saying, no, that's, you're not getting near David Rasco. They've cut him off at every possible angle. McDonald doing the job there. And Danny just prevented Matt Allen from going anywhere. I was just looking at this Barnstable roster again, and I get a prior to the game, only one senior on the squad. It's 
two to nothing Weymouth they have owned. The start of this one with ease. Seamus Donovan both goals. Kelleher trying to loop it ahead for Beston. Beston just points to Kelleher and Donovan where he wants them to go. And Beston forcing the issue and getting the throw in for the Wildcats. Tim Carroll Alexis on the another terrific throw in. Stanford comes smoking in and collides with Patrick Beaufort. And the result, the violation on John. All Wildcats so far. And they really do not show any signs of flying up. It's one thing about this team so far. This 96 season in the five that they have played. This being game number six on the schedule. They have done it with burst. In the game with Plymouth South. If you remember it was 2-1 at halftime, then all of a sudden, about the first 10 minutes of the second half, three goals. Same scenario down at Silver Lake. Same scenario here today, but it's done in the first half this time with two goals in the first eight minutes. And that is due to the opposition, something that makes it brutal as Stevens goes up in a violation called by Dave Jacobs. There's a wildcat gets caught in the middle is Milton Speed on the goal kick, but put it right to Seamus Donovan. Stanford to the middle of the Beston. Chris tries to turn, cut off on the play. It was cut off by Rosa. And Rosa pushed off. And the indirect kick coming up. And Carol Alexis waits, gets told what he wants. Stevens with a heck of a save. And another great play, and Beston just cleans up what was going on. And Chris Machado couldn't finish it because of the defense by Barnstable, but Chris Beston does 3-0 Weymouth. Hold. Great offensive pressure by the Wildcats, and they have a three to nothing lead. It is just total ownership here to start this one. And Tim Carroll Alexis and Joe Kelleher, and it is going to be Tim Carroll Alexis. It's restart, and he is. Had a couple of great restart situations in this one. McDonald looked back at the great throw-in by Tim Carolexis, and then that that kick that was just tough for Mark Stevens, who had the rebound right on the doorstep, and it was finished off by the Wildcats. Three nothing Weymouth. That's McCann and David Rasco. And he's yet to see the soccer ball come his way as the sun peeking in and out here and trying to give you on the iris situation and the sun focusing in and out and makes it very, very difficult to try to do the mechanic thing and do the play at times. Machado. When you look at it, Talking to Steve Shaw prior to the game, he was telling me how the Silver Lake match with three goals in the first ten minutes of that second half, and you look at the three goals here. So in the last two halves now the Wildcats have played, the first ten minutes have been the thing, and look back at the Plymouth South match. And look 
back at that second half and three goals. That is something that really has got to be talked about. Hatakis, good idea. Carol Alexis trying to curl in behind, but the offsides call. All Wildcats so far. These two of their tri captains provided the scoring. Seamus Donovan and Chris Besson, Tommy Hantakis. Keith Verney and Paul McCann. Wildcats. Just a relentless pressure that they have been able to put on. Barnstable. Tommy and Tack is just in the middle of that one, John Stanford. Matt Allen tried to turn and go upfield. And the two just, and Tack is, especially in Stanford, helping out as well, just made sure that the play wasn't ever going to develop. And Stevens trying to make sure that this situation wasn't going to develop. Stanford. Violation in the Red Raiders just trying to get something offensively started. Drop back pass right there. Evan Greer doesn't pay off. Wildcats will bring in some substitutions. Donovan getting a breather after the start, and why not? Eh? There he is putting in the first two goals, and then, of course, Beston with one as well. Tommy Aiello trying to get the soccer ball and get this play going once again. And Takis behind. He shielded enough and forced it to go upfield as Beston loops went in. Stevens with the stop. Finds the ball. And reverse it and try to go upfield. Beston. Wildcats will have the throw in. Three nothing Weymouth. David Rasco and really just touching the soccer ball for the first time. And we had played about 15 minutes. And I'll tell you, when I watched him just slip now, and the funny thing is, I walked around the field a little bit, not much in, before the game. That is about the only spot in watching the teams warm that I ever saw anybody really slide a little. Other than that, field is in pretty good shape because the day of this game, it just was. It poured in the morning and then it poured the night before and it was questioned whether this one will be played. And I'll just clear it up and everything is back and we're now here and the Wildcats are glad that they're playing because they've just exploded in the beginning of this one and just dominated. They're beating Barnstable, anything that resembles 50-50 ball, they're just not letting them turn, and realistically, surprising, I mean, as far as, say how much they are dominating, Iowa, for Aiello as McConnell worked it ahead. Compreccio couldn't get there and Rosa knocks it away and clears it out. 
from Carol Alexis. This spot in the field set up a goal in the first few minutes of this one. With a great throw in like that. And there are so many dangerous situations here in the first part of this game for the Wildcats. They have cashed in on three, two by Seamus Donovan and one by Chris Beston and it has not been any doubt so far. Stanford beaten to the ball by Eric Montel. McDonald drives it off. Matt Allen out of bounds. 3-0 Weymouth here on the first half. Mark Michelle with you. Cox Communications 23. Wildcats. Totally, totally on. I mean, look at that. Two Wildcats went up to one Red Raider. That has been the story so far. Wildcats been much more the aggressor. And it has paid off. Stanford rifles went in. Stevens, whoa! Couldn't get the handle for a moment and nearly squeezed it out of his hands and into the net. It's McCann. Try to work it upfield and then goes out of bounds. All Wildcats here in this first half. And then you just, that was a good example of how quick they have been attacking the ball. When you look at it right there on that particular throw and that binds the ball. Both sides were taken away for throwing it in by Doug Mullen. Mullen tried, he looked left, he looked right, and the Wildcats surrounding him. He had nowhere to go. Clemson didn't get anything out of it uh, as far as anything towards the net, but still. It's just swallowing a team in your own end and possible. Alex Brown booting it out of bounds. One thing about this advantage, the Wildcats, with the substitutions, just rotating fresh bodies in there. All Weymouth, first half, 3-0 they lead. They have not let Bynes the ball really just do anything. No shot as of yet on David Rasco. McCann. Well, to be honest with you, buys the ball and you know, just not really put anything, anything close to the box that they had put. It's been cleared away as quickly as it has gone to the box, and that has been about at most a couple of seconds. This is by far Barnstable's best push the first 25 minutes in this particular match. Nice job right there to clear it out and push it away by Milton Speed. And David Rasco gets to see the soccer ball. McCann, Donovan, the ball deflected back up. Seamus bounces one wide. One's a few shots. Players in the state championship team, Kevin Joyce. KJ, who the Bridgewater State. One of the back line was Scott Devonshire and Glenn Runney. Back line that opposition realistically needed a bazooka to get it by. And when they did, Jason Scott would clean up 
as far as saves went in that particular team. And the other great thing about that team, Steve Shaw told me, you know, he, when I gave him a highlight from that season, the Wildcat coach reminded me of an interview I did down in Taunton to Jason Scott, who said that they would win the state title that year. David Rasko has had the punt one away and now has a goal kick. Then had one bounce towards the box and then he had the punt, they had to just roll away. That's been it. That's the only thing Barstable has done so far. Stanford. Whoops, one ahead. And he's knocked down by Alex Brown. And Donald cuts off the play. It's Matt Allen can't get to the ball because Keith Rooney beat him to it. Rooney Clarence said out of bounds. close to the box and it's just been clear for away by the Wildcats there hasn't been a doubt in this first half first half that is owned by Weymouth High at Weymouth Junior High we are all Weymouth so far as they lead Barnstable 3 to nothing. they have owned this first half Three goals, about four more dangerous opportunities, and the Wildcats have not allowed Barstable anything, and it's just, there's been no doubt. You don't want to keep on hammering the point in. That's the way it has gone here in this first half. Weston and Carol Alexis return for Compreccio and Falco. Takis trying to turn and couldn't. Carol Alexis cut off from the play, but recovers nicely, and he along with Stafford almost forced ball upfield. Just the quick moving passes by the Wildcat team in the first half. Barnstable defense, since it goes off Kelleher out of bounds, it should be a Barnstable throwing, but Hammond's going to get a break. It went off the back of Joe Kelleher's heel. Tim Kallex is throwing. Takas gets dumped on the play. Kallex just chips it across. Nice play by Chris Machado to knock it down on the hop. And referee Peter Hansen signals a violation on the Wildcats. The lead three to nothing. Two goals by Seamus Donovan, one by Chris Beston. Brown just slipped. A shadow cut off from the play. I Milton speed. And Takis pushes ahead. Stanford speed. Doing a great job. He just, well, nowhere to go, but he just kept the poise and just waited and found that Rich Saunders on his back and then get it back to Keith Fernie. Beston can't trap it. Bounce to it there's a first shot on David Rasco. Not a hard one by Matt Allen. 
And now let's go with the stop. Carol Lexis, chest trap knocks it down. Donovan gets pushed from behind by Speed. Donovan stays with the play. Speed, three little pushes from behind and get away with all of them. 